Hey everyone, this is Steve Wright, and you're listening to the SC Lifestyle Solution Podcast number 21. All right, on the phone with me tonight, my friend and partner, Jordan Reasoner. How's it going, man? Oh, I'm doing great, man. You know, uh, I'm pretty excited. Our podcast turns 21 tonight, so I want to toast. You know, we got to take it out for a drink, have some fun, relax a little bit, you know? It's true, it's true. I'm going to hold up a glass of wine here. All right, excellent. Cheers. Okay, first off, we want to thank everyone for sending in their questions. Um, so what we're planning to do is just grab them in the order that they come in, and we're just throwing them in the podcast queue. So thanks for everyone who submitted your questions. Um, if we don't get your question tonight, don't worry. It's still in our queue. We're going to get to it next week or the week after. Um, and I just want to tell everyone to continue dropping them in the queue. Um, if you actually start to overload us or something, maybe we'll we'll stretch these podcasts out to an hour or something. But you probably wouldn't want to listen to us for an hour, so uh, we'll just we'll stay with that. Um, lastly, before we get started, I just want to say that if you like what you hear tonight, if you've liked what you've heard in the last 20 podcasts, we would love it if you could go to iTunes and rate us in iTunes. You just kind of go in there and uh, say how much you learned and how much the podcast has helped you, or whatever your opinion is, really. Um, but Rating the podcast in iTunes really helps give us a little bit more publicity. It helps other people who may have your same problems search us out uh, if they're searching on Google or in iTunes. So, again, please, if you like what you hear, uh, go rate us in iTunes. It would be a big help for us. So, thanks. All right, man. You, uh, you ready to get rolling with this q and I'm ready, man. I've got the first question primed and ready for you. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Question number one. I was never diagnosed with IBS, but had burning pain in lower stomach or small intestine for a few years, but no ulcers were detected. I've been on SCD for a few weeks. Uh, Some of those weeks have been better. First question is, what are the best SCD vitamins? Ordered some vitamin C only to note upon receipt that it contains fructose, sodium bicarbonate, xylitol, natural flavors, and colors. Frida vitamins are advertised as being SCD legal. Are they good? Also, you sent a message to me saying that we don't need fiber. I have a book from the Cancer Project headed by Dr. Neil Bernard of Washington, D.C., and he states that the high-fiber diet has been tested, and it greatly helps to keep the colon clean, flushing out excess cholesterol, hormones, and carcinogens. Breast tumors are fueled by excess estrogens and stated also that without adequate fiber to hold them in the digestive tract, sex hormones are reabsorbed in the bloodstream, where they once again become biologically active. Would you please comment on this? Thank you very much for all your info, Ruth. All right, thanks, Ruth, for uh, for the question. There's several questions in there, so I'll start from the beginning. Um, the first one that I got here is, uh, which is the best SCD vitamins? Okay, it's a great question, um, and I would say GI Pro Health for anything that's SCD legal that they make. Uh, we rely on GI Pro Health. Um, we use them whenever we can. I think that they make the best quality gel caps. They make the best. They use the best quality ingredients, which are like the chelated minerals and uh, vitamins that they use as well as their probiotics are uh, dairy-free, which no one else that we know of has those. So I would highly recommend GI Pro Health. If you don't find what you need from GI Pro Health, I would look to Source Naturals or Thorn Research as your second two, and then a close fourth would be uh, Frida Vitamins. Um, And your second question was, Frida Vitamins, as advertised, are they SE legal? Are they good? Um, so Frida Vitamins, they do have some that are labeled SE legal, and Frida was the original company that Elaine worked with to kind of set up some vitamins for the SED diet back in the day. And while I do think Fridas are um, hypoallergenic and they do a, they run a pretty decent ship, I just don't think they use the best raw materials when it comes to their their formulations. So the three that I mentioned before them, in my my opinion, are in a higher bucket, and I think you'll see the price advertised. Uh, reflects that so I think vitamins are pay for what you get type of thing and um, I don't think you're going to go wrong if you go with Frida but I do think that they are not the top of the top of the order um, okay so moving on uh, so the next part of the question was about the the book The Cancer Project by Dr. Neil Bernard from Washington um, and and whether the high fiber diet and that type of thing so I haven't read this book and I don't know much about Dr. Neil Bernard um, I do remember sending you the fiber email, and uh, while I don't remember all the specifics, I think um, mainly what I was really trying to get my point across in that email to you was that the fiber 
that we get through our diet from vitamin or from excuse me from vegetables and fruits are really all that we need. Um, our ancestors, even 50 years ago, people weren't eating psyllium husk or they weren't trying extra hard to add fiber to the diet and they weren't suffering from the conditions we suffer from right now. So I really don't see the need to uh, worry about fiber, nor do I see the need to supplement with fiber. It's a stool bulker and if you know anything about the digestive system, if the motility of your digestive tract is compromised at all, you you plug it up with a bunch of stool bulk, then it's just going to sit there and it can cause a lot of problems. So we talk a lot about how we think fat is the number one key to um, getting over constipation and not psyllium husk, and that's just because fat is a lubricant, whereas psyllium husk, again, is just going to make um, the stool bigger. So uh, uh, I'm not sure about the sex hormones and all that, but what I would reassure you is that you can get all the fiber you need from vitamins, or excuse me, I said it again, from vegetables and fruits. So just keep your, your vegetables and fruits up. Uh, mo mostly on the vegetables, and I, I don't see you having a problem with fiber. Uh, Jordan, I don't know if you have anything to add on that. No, man, I think you uh, I think you did a great job covering everything. I think I'm ready for the next question. Okay, let's keep it rolling. Question number two. I'm craving starchy vegetables. I find that eating too much protein is bogging me down, but the leafy green veggies don't fill me up. I am fructose intolerant, so I have to limit fruit and honey. I am allergic to dairy, eggs, beans, though I seem to be tolerant, tolerating lentils and split peas. But I am craving starchy veggies, and I'm eating so many carrots that I'm turning orange, in quotes, literally. I'm allergic to squash, so can you suggest some other STD-safe, legal, starchy veggies that will fill me up? Thanks, Gail. Excellent question, Gail. Thanks for sending it in. I can totally relate to turning orange from carrots. I, I cannot look at a single carrot again. I, I ate them for the first three months on this diet, and uh, I just can't do it anymore. So totally sympathize there. Um, when I'm looking at uh, you telling me that you're allergic to dairy, eggs, and beans, uh, I can totally sympathize with that as well. I still don't do dairy and eggs, so um, that's something that uh, I can relate to. And in terms of having craving starchy vegetables, the first thing I would suggest is looking to try to get more fats in your body at every meal. So, you know, cook with coconut oil. You can add olive oil to, you can drizzle it right on your meat, drizzle it right on your veggies after you cook the meat or, you know, while you're eating the veggies. Um, it's a great dip in that regard. Coconut oil tastes really good, uh, especially with the meat being cooked in it. It does better with high temps, but that's going to help you curb a little bit of those cravings. Um, the fats are going to turn off some of those uh, hormones that, that relate to hunger feelings and it will help you feel more full, uh, feel like you're getting more uh, energy from each of your meals. So I would definitely start with the fats more than anything. But in terms of substituting some veggies in place of the starchy veggies, you know, if you're not doing well with the, the squash family, um, I'm not sure... Uh, how you're saying you're allergic to the squash? I'm not sure what that means. If you're if it's causing a reaction, um, you know if it's just causing a setback right now, you might be eating too much of it. So you might want to make it a little more diverse. Um, but if it is something that's causing you to uh, to have diarrhea right now, then you might want to cut out all of the squash family and maybe look to uh, a zucchini or a cucumber. Um, those are kind of a pain to uh, to process, de-seed, peel, and uh, uh, puree, but there is a section in our book where we talk about exactly uh, some of the tips and tricks we use, but you could try those. Um, those are two of the next go-to foods. Um, broccoli and spinach also is something to try. Some people have a little bit more problem with broccoli. Uh, it can cause a lot of gas, um, but those are definitely where I would head if you're having problems with the squashes. Um, but first and foremost, I would look at trying to get more fats in each of your meals and see, see if that doesn't help some of your cravings. So. Uh, start there and uh, let us know how you're doing. That should help you get started. Sounds good. All right, perfect. I'm going to roll right to the next question, Steve. Here we go. Hi, I have digestive problems, mainly diarrhea, for many years. It started when I was around 17 and now I'm 26 and the doctors can't find anything. Um, I've been testing SCD for the past month and it's helped me a lot. Um, I don't eat a lot of meat for ethical reasons and I currently don't have many choices for food. Do you know if SCD can be successful for vegetarians? 
Is there any food to substitute for meat, especially in the beginning? Thanks for all the information you're sharing. Kind regards, Jonas. Okay, Jonas, great question. Um, the first thing I'm actually going to work backwards on this, is there a food that's a substitute for meat? Uh, when it comes to a, a per nutrient like ratio, like one for one, no. No, there's nothing. Um, meat provides a it provides you know complete proteins as well as tons of nutrients um, vitamins and minerals so while there are foods like lentils and beans that will substitute for the protein that you're going to miss from meat um, it can be very difficult to replace meat in the diet um, now that being said let's move back one more question to the vegetarian question um, do I know if SCD can be successful for vegetarians um, I have yet to meet a vegetarian that uh, has been successful. That doesn't mean there aren't some out there, and I do think you can be successful. But I do think you have to take very good care of your body, and you have to sort of eat maybe even a more restricted diet than what SCD calls for because you're not going to be eating meat. Now, if you, if you are a vegetarian that eats fish or eggs, I would highly suggest um, eating tons of, of fish and eggs. Uh, you can't overdo either. They're both extremely high in nutrients, like I talked about before. Um, and the next thing on the list of, of foods for vegetarians is lentils. Lentils are a complete protein. Uh, they're, they're the lowest of the bean family in oleosaccharides, which are like the gas-causing substances. So definitely keep or introduce lentils as soon as you can. The other thing to have on a daily basis is coconut oil and coconut milk, both extremely high in fats. Um, they can use, you know, as Jordan talked about, for for cooking stuff in. You can drizzle them over your. You can saute your veggies in them. You can drizzle them over your your veggies um, with coconut milk. There's tons of things you can do from curries to making a uh, making a shake with it every day. So I th I think you can definitely do SCD vegetarian style. It just requires that you have some like staple foods. Another one would be avocado. Um, and then, again, possibly something like black beans or red beans or something like that. And you're going to need to keep those in your diet pretty much on a daily basis. So if you run into problems with, like, gas in the bean family, um, be very careful that your protein um, doesn't, you know, slip, bef slip below, like, 10% of your diet or 15% of your diet. So uh, I, I think it's doable. If there's any vegetarians out there that are listening to this that are, are successful on SCD, um, I would we'd love it if you could contact us, let us know. Your, your, you know, what you eat on a daily basis, what's your routine, what do you supplement with, leave a, you know, also leave a message at the end of this podcast, a, a comment, and, and let others know, so, but that's about all I got, Jordan, you got anything? No, man, great work, let's keep rolling. Okay, thanks, Jonas. All right, moving on to question number four. Hi there, I actually have two questions, so feel free to answer either one or both. I have had digestive problems for eight years now, and I was recently diagnosed with Klebsiella oxytoa. I believe that's how you say that. I've been on SCD for a couple months now, but restarted in more strictly two weeks ago. I have chronic constipation, and I have tried prunes, natural calm, and I take fish oil. And the only thing that makes me go is a cup of coffee. I'm scared to eat nut flour because I don't think I'm ready for it. Is coffee going to set me back? What are your thoughts on it? I usually have diarrhea when I drink it. The other question is, I have recently noticed a metallic taste in my mouth, and I have lost a lot of sense of taste. My zinc levels are fine. I'm not sure about my B12. Do you have any thoughts on that? I just started a thyroid med and was thinking that, it, that this is causing it. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate, really appreciate the podcast and website. Excellent. Well, excellent question. Thank you for sending it in. I can definitely sympathize. I've had a long romance and love affair with coffee. Sometimes it was a love-hate relationship over the years. Uh, I've talked about my great coffee experiment before where uh, a couple months into the diet, I tried coffee again, and it just triggered diarrhea like crazy. I, I just couldn't even have half a cup. And then as I reached some higher levels of health where uh, I finally eliminated dairy 100%, and uh, I finally uh, stopped eating so much fruit in a day. I actually started feeling so good I tried coffee again, and it was fine. And ever since then, I've been having two to three cups a day, and I, I enjoy it every single day. 
and uh, it's something I cherish every day. So I think if the coffee's bothering you right now, just take a break from it. I mean, you really don't need to be uh, drinking something that's going to trigger diarrhea. However, uh, the constipation is something that you need to work on. And, you know, you've already tried some of the different things that uh, that we've mentioned before, like natural common fish oil. Uh, I know Steve's tried prunes and didn't have much luck with them. But really, the fundamental two things that have to be in place before you even go to something like natural calm is, are you taking plenty of probiotics? And are you getting plenty of fats in your diet? I mean, we talk about getting up to 60% of your calories in a day from fats, you know, from things like, um, if you can tolerate them, avocados, olive oil, coconut oil, things like that, um, fatty meats. And when you're eating 60% of your calories in fats, pretty much most people are not going to have issues with constipation. There's going to be outliers to that, but for the most part, there's uh, a large percentage of people that do just fine on 60% fat. So what I'm saying is first try to increase your fats. That's the number one thing that's going to help you keep things moving. Second of all, make sure you're taking probiotics. If you're not, try to introduce Scadophilus by GI Pro Health. It's a really good uh, lactobacillus acidophilus. Try to work your way up to 20 billion uh, CFUs a day. And that should really help you keep things moving as well. I think I've seen different studies that have said between 30 and 50% of a bowel movement is dead bacteria. That number varies, but you know, really, if you think about that, uh, the probiotics are only going to help uh, provide you more mass to move through and keep things going. So those are the first two things you have to have in place before you can really say, okay, I'm doing these two things and I'm still constipated. Now what do I do? Then I would want you to write us and let us know, and we can fine-tune and do a few other little things. But I would definitely not rely on the coffee. I would take that out until you get to a point in your health where that's something you could have and enjoy and it doesn't bother you. Um, so that's definitely something I would look at. Um, in terms of the metallic taste in your mouth, um, I did a little bit of research just uh, before our call here to try to understand that a little more. Um, and just doing some basic Googling into some studies on thyroid meds and metallic taste came up with some uh, evidence of people having metallic taste related to thyroid meds, either IV or orally. Also, penicillin and lithium uh, have similar reactions. So there have been people that have experienced that from thyroid medication, so there could be a correlation there. I would talk to your doctor about it, maybe see if you can test not taking it for a few days, if that's something he's up for or she is up for. Um, so think about that, but uh, I don't know, that's something you're going to have to pursue uh, in terms of uh, talking to your doctor. Uh, I'm not sure if the lack of sense of taste would also be related to that, um, but I would guess, I would ask, um, you know, zinc tests, Steve's talked about this before, zinc tests from the blood are not that reliable, so you might look at getting an intracellular blood test done to get better data on that and really understand where your blood levels are at with zinc um, in terms of the lack of sense of taste. Um, but there's also like a, a tally test that we can post a link to also uh, after this blog. But other than that, you're doing great. Uh, just keep working at it. Avoid the coffee and get some probiotics and fats going. I think you'll be feeling a lot better. Great work, man. Good answer. Excellent. I'm going to keep rolling. All right, question number five. Hello guys, I've had UC since August 2010. I was recently hospitalized for this due to a really bad flare-up, almost to the point of surgery to remove the hole in my colon. I'm currently taking a number of medications including acetal and azapriothene, which at present does not seem to be working. I started the SCD diet back in March, but had very few little success with it, and I found it difficult as I was a hardcore vegan for many years. The transition to eating eggs and dairy has been very hard for me, and ethically I cannot eat meat which obviously limits me in some ways, and I guess I'm heavily relying on eggs, cheese, and making my own yogurt. I'm still having many trips to the bathroom, sometimes five to eight times, all in the morning with some blood at times. I admit to having lapsed a couple times, which of course I've paid the consequences. Being based in the UK, I found it difficult to find good support groups, and it appears that in the US there seems to be a lot more support from doctors and an understanding of UC. I get very frustrated when I visit my gastro consultant who assures me that UC is not diet related. I feel extremely frustrated at the moment and, of course, want to get better, but at times find the diet very limiting, even now as a vegetarian. Is there any advice you can give me in the hope that I can at least get to a point where I don't have to spend every day worrying what I eat and how it will affect me the following day? I often have to give up an extra hour early in order to go to the bathroom uh, before I leave. 
I've only recently found your site, and I found it very helpful. Many thanks, Riz. Great question, Riz. Um, sorry to hear about your, your recent struggles there. Um, uh, I guess where to start. So uh, the first thing I want to hone in here is uh, we want to get you feeling as good as you can, as fast as you can. And I know your doctors don't tell you that UC um, is related to diet, but uh, not a lot of doctors here in the U.S. say it is either, but there's you know hundreds if not thousands, maybe 10,000 people now who know that uh, IBDs are related to diet, so do know that that is true. Um, so let's back up to you not feeling good. Let's get you feeling good right away. The first thing I would say is uh, we have the four horsemen that we talk about, and one of those is dairy and the other is egg. Um, and you're talking about how you're eating lots of eggs, cheese, and yogurt right now, and you're still going to the bathroom five to eight times with some blood. So my number one recommendation for you to start feeling better tomorrow is to quit all dairy and eggs. Remove those from your diet right away tomorrow and go probably five days without them in your diet and then based on the fact that you are a vegetarian um, I know I talked about this earlier uh, so I, I'm assuming you obviously eat eggs I'm not sure if you eat fish but um, so go five days without the eggs and cheese then the first thing I would introduce is the eggs back in because I do believe they have so many nutrients that are just so beneficial and lots of protein as a vegetarian you need those um, try that right away. If you can do fish, I would be having fish probably every day, every other day. Um, get some avocado going right away. Um, I would not worry about the yogurt right now and especially not worry about the cheese. If the eggs go well and uh, things start to clear up in the next five days, um, really focus on, like we talked about, getting some fats, uh, some coconut oil, some olive oil, some macadamia nut oil. Any of those oils are going to be great to help you out. Um, I would say that you probably want to look into sourcing in the UK somewhere, some sort of probiotic, and uh, hopefully that's dairy-free. If not, just get, find some lactobacillus somehow and get, get on that, and then also be looking for some digestive enzymes. Um, other than that, um, the yogurt can come later and the cheese even later than that, so I would introduce the eggs after five days. If all goes well, do those for four days and then keep them in the diet, then I would then I would probably move on to avocados and uh, coconut products and that type of thing, and then move up from there. I would not worry about the yogurt for until at least you know you're getting down to one to two bowel movements a day that are of high quality and no more blood. So I hope that helps. Uh, let us know. Let us know how the changes go and what you decide to do, and uh, hopefully we'll look forward to hearing back from you in the comment section. Excellent, man. Let's keep rolling. Great answer. All right. We're trucking right now. Moving on to number six. I've had a CD since I was two. I am now 30 years old. I've had a pretty mild case my whole life. My inflammation exists only in the large intestine. I started SCD two and a half weeks ago while coming off Entercort. I still take 6MP every day. Don't think it's really making a difference, though. I couldn't tolerate the yogurt at first now. I am mixing it with a banana and some almond butter, and it seems to be going okay. At the beginning of the diet, my stools were great, fours and fives. Now they are back to a six. I feel fine most of the day, sometimes mild cramping, but the issue I've had even before the diet were loose stools in the morning. It seems as soon as I wake up, I get the urge to go. I am fine the rest of the day. I am wondering if you think that I could take some kind of supplement before bed, maybe an herbal anti-inflammatory. I currently take calcium, 4,000 IU of vitamin D, both Frida. Thank you. Also, any tips on gaining weight? All right, excellent question. Okay, so before I get into the anti-inflammatory before bed part of the question, uh, I would first, you know, usually I, I would find out, okay, so you told me that you started SCD two and a half weeks um, ago, and that in the beginning you were feeling good, you know, you're having fours and fives, and now you're back to falling into a regression where you're having sixes. So the first thing I would say is, what were you eating then? And what have you introduced now that's causing this problem? And so I would say whatever you ate in those first two and a half weeks, you'd probably call your food safe zone. That's going to be those foods that you know you can eat that are going to make you feel great. So the first thing I would say is, I would almost go back to those and then build up slowly and very strategically so that you know 
that you have a food safe zone and as you introduce new foods to that zone you know that those foods make you feel good because right now you're not feeling good and you've obviously changed something the second thing is like every time I hear someone say that uh, sometimes they have mild cramping especially like midday a siren goes off in my head to ask about breakfast and it it's like this pattern that I always see in email and talking to people on the phone they're so getting mild cramping and then I ask about breakfast I usually find bananas it's just it's a common pattern I see and I would almost say bananas are like the fifth dark horseman they're like the secret dark horseman the raw bananas are very tempting and I can't blame everybody I did it too and the reason is that it's easy to reach and grab you don't have to make it you don't have to puree it you don't have to do anything you just open it and eat it it's awesome you can take it anywhere the problem is that in the beginning uh, if especially if it's not really really ripe uh, a lot of those sugars haven't broke down completely and you're getting a lot of sugar right away first thing in the morning um, especially since uh, you're mixing it with almond butter as well which you know is a nut product so that's another dark horseman um, I would say test eliminating the the banana and almond butter um, and especially just try to substitute that with a meat like the turkey breakfast sausage that I make um, and I've got a recipe I can post a link to in a video but I, I would say first go back to your food safe zone and then look at your banana and your almond butter and maybe try to swap that out with some meat maybe a little coconut oil and I think that you'd get two things from that your cramping would probably go away from limiting your sugar intake, um, you're probably going to feel much better and not have the the D first thing in the morning. Um, and then the the other thing is that you're probably going to start gaining weight because when you swap in fats for uh, some of those calories that you're getting from the banana and almond butter, uh, you're probably going to have uh, a better result if you're having something like coconut oil or olive oil with a little bit of protein. So I would start there. Um, fish oil is probably the best anti-inflammatory that you could do if you did. Uh, maybe some high dose fish oil for a couple weeks and then tapered down but before you looked at any of that stuff I would definitely look at make sure you're eating your food safe zone so you can start to feel better and then look at the banana and almond butter especially if you're eating it for breakfast um, and start there so stay in touch uh, send us an email and let us know how you're doing and that's pretty much all I got for that yeah it sounds to me uh, like you said that uh Whatever has been added lately is definitely causing the problems. It sounds to me like that was yogurt. So happens to a lot of people. Yogurt is a wonderful thing, but if you find your food safe zone and then you add yogurt and things don't get better in like two or three days, uh, yogurt's not part of your food safe zone. So take it back out and try it again in a, in a month or two. Awesome. Great point. I kind of skimmed over that line. Perfect. All right. Let's roll into number seven. Here we go. I've got colitis. Quite a few years ago, I came across a study showing that use of enteric coated fish oil helps colitis patients. In your commentary, you often refer to fish oil as an option for treatment. Are you referring to normal fish oil or enteric coated? Do you know of any reason to use one over the other? Okay, great question. I actually had to do a little Googling, a little research to figure this out. So enteric coated fish oil, what an enteric coated pill is, is uh, a pill that has a special coating on it that allows it to survive the pH in the stomach acid. So this is used in a lot in uh, things like aspirin. There's some other IBD medications that use it just because either the active ingredients in the pill um, will irritate the stomach and or they'll be ruined by the pH in the stomach. So what an enteric coated fish oil, what the potential benefits and the people who make enteric coated fish oil um, are trying to sell you is that by ensuring, I guess, I don't know if they can say that they actually insure it, but by trying to design it so that it makes it through the stomach acid pH without being broken down in the pill form, is that the fatty acid, which is the fish oil, um, will not become rancid because it's exposed to the high pH. Uh, so the other thing that, it, that it's good for is uh, some people when they take um, fish oil pills, they'll get like the fish oily burps, and that can be because the fish oil is getting released in the stomach and not in the small intestine. So that's I think those are the two biggest selling points that the uh, enteric coated pills for fish oil are, are talking about there. Um, when it comes to me, I have had some brands of fish oil that do give me the fishy burps. Um, I do very well with Carlson's cod liver oil, and I do great with GI Pro's Health uh, Omega Max. 
Um, I think both of those are great options. Neither one of those are enteric coated. And when we are referring to fish oil, we are normally not talking about enteric coated. Um, we do uh, only recommend certain brands because, again, like I said, some brands are just more reputable than others. We know that they use high-quality fish oil. We know that they usually get them from sustainable fishing practices. Um, two of those that come the highest regard are the GI Pro Health, the Mega Max, and the Carlson's Cod Liver Oil. Um, a couple options, if you did want to try the Enteric Coated, would be, uh, I think, Kirkland brand makes a pretty good fish oil, and it's pretty cheap, you can get it at Costco, and then I think Nature's Way is another good brand that, that does offer some enteric coated capsules. So, uh, you know, I really, I don't know as the science has really proven that the enteric coated is going to help on the fish oil, and when most experts you hear talking about it, they're normally not referring specifically to the enteric coated, so kind of a matter of preference. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, kind of with some of these other questions, if you do try them, um, like enteric coated versus, say, like the Omega Max, like pill per pill, I would love to hear how it goes. Maybe one you get fish oil taste, maybe the other you don't, or maybe you feel better, you know, after a five-day test on one or the other. Um, it's that kind of real-world information and feedback. It's kind of how we've built our knowledge base. So um, I would encourage you to do your own testing and see how it goes. Yes, be a mad scientist. And then let us know how crazy things got. <laughs> it's always good times. Okay, so we're we're getting down to the last one here, Jordan. You ready for the finale? I'm ready. All right, number eight. I would like to purchase your book, but I see it advertised as an ebook. Is it available in print? As I would much rather not have to read it on the computer. Ha! Ah, excellent question for the last question of the night. Uh, and a matter of fact, we get this question, I don't know, every couple weeks, so uh, I don't know. I think it's good. You can finally get a little uh, little answer going here. Okay, so I apologize if there's any confusion about our book at all. Uh, right now, we do only offer it online as an ebook. It comes in a PDF format, um, and that is so that people can instantly download it as soon as you buy it. So you can start the diet as soon as possible or start troubleshooting the diet as soon as possible, whatever your, your pain point is. And you don't have to go down to the supermarket and pick it up. You don't have to go to Barnes & Noble and pick it up. You don't have to order it online and wait a week until the mailman delivers it. You get it five minutes after you click buy now. Uh, you're downloading. So um, it helps us to get it to more people on the web without having to ship all over the world. It gets it uh, in people's hands instantly. It can be read on any computer. Or you can use like a Kindle Nook or a little ebook reader, iPad type things uh, as well. But we find that everybody's been pretty happy with the ebook method, even though it's a little weird for some people at first. Um, but you know, you do have a 365-day uh, guarantee with the book, so you could always just uh, you know check it out, download it, see what you think, and let us know. Um, you know, if you don't like it, it's not right for you. We don't uh, want to keep your money, so you can just send us an email and say, "Hey, this isn't right for me," um, and we'll refund your money. But you know, some people that we've talked to did uh, want to have some of it in hard copy, like uh, maybe they had some of the recipes they printed out and they wanted it in their kitchen, that kind of stuff. Um, so they did do things like download it to a disk or a thumb drive and take it over to Kinko's or just print it off their own computer. Um, so they just kind of pick and, and choose the key parts of the book they want, uh, and they get those printed off, and it's very cheap and simple that way, and they enjoyed the flexibility they got from it. Um, so I think that about sums it up. I mean, um, really, uh, we just want to make sure that people get the information that they need and that you're not going to be missing something that's going to help you start feeling better uh, tomorrow. So uh, we do offer our guarantee and, uh, you know, give the ebook uh, a try. Check it out and try it out for size and, uh, and see what you think. But I think that's all I got. What do you got to add, Steve? Um, so I got a couple of Quick points I just wanted to point out on the top of the cool things that you talked about and why the uh, the ebook's an ebook. So another couple cool things about why an ebook is in some regards better than a print book. So the first one is in a PDF you can use a search. You can do Control F and you could search for terms such as like maybe you wanted to search for fructose or broccoli or anything like that um, like supplement and you can search by the word and then just zoom to the pages that it's on and quickly read what you're looking for so that's a cool little neat trick that um, you can use with the 
ebook. Now, the other cool thing about an ebook, and not all ebooks are like this, but rest assured that our ebook is. We, because we don't put it in print format, give you lifetime updates. So now I, I don't. I can't predict when the updates are going to happen. I can tell you we've already rewrote our book once. I mean, completely redone it once, and we've only had it on the market for I don't know, like a year and three months. So when because the eBooks, um, you know, we can just send you an email saying, "Hey, we redid the book or we added this section to the book," and give you another link to go download your new and fresh copy. So that's really awesome because you're always going to have the most up-to-date info about SCD and SC lifestyle. And I think that sh that's a pretty huge value. Um, it's something you definitely do not get in a print book. Now, the other thing is, is because we did get so many people who were a little, little hesitant about the ebook format, we decided to go one step further to make sure that you're getting the best deal possible. And we created our book on an audio book format. So we made an MP3 of the entire book. So if you're someone who maybe uh, doesn't like reading on the computer, don't worry. We have an audio file. You can burn it to a CD. You can listen to it in the car then. You can listen to it in the kitchen while you're cooking. You could put it on your iPod and listen to it while you work out. You can literally take it wherever you want to go, and you don't have to read a thing. Now, normally, you know, you can't just get a print book and an audio book together. You normally have to pay like 20 bucks for the print book and 30 bucks for the CDs. We give that to you for free. So um, we are trying to make it as user-friendly as possible. And like Jordan said, we don't want you to miss out on something that could really change your life. Um, so we're trying to give it to you as many formats as you can, uh, you can handle. And for, you know, different people like to learn different ways. So we're trying to accommodate all those people. Um, with that, Jordan, you got anything to wrap it up? No, oh, that was great, man. Uh, my only question now is uh, how do I get a copy of the book if I want one? Oh, great question, dude. Okay, so if you're listening to this on the blog, if you look up in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little ad up there that talks about the book, and there's a little green button that says Buy It Now. You just go up there, click on that Buy It Now button, and it's going to take you over to our book sales page, and just scroll down to one of the Buy buttons, hit Buy, and you'll have the book within five minutes. And uh, you can be listening to it or reading it right away today or tonight. Excellent, excellent. Well, it's been a great 21st birthday for our podcast, so why don't you bring it home, man? All right, cool. Well, thanks, everybody, for listening. Again, uh, you can get our book in the upper right-hand corner of our blog or at scdlifestylebook.com. And if you loved what you heard tonight, you already have the book or you're not going to buy the book, either way, we'd love it if you could go to iTunes and give us a rating. Let us know how we're doing, if we're answering your questions and, and all that kind of good stuff. So cool. Thanks for listening. This has been the SC Lifestyle Solution Podcast number 21.